Hey guys, this is Terry with Futures IO. It's my pleasure to welcome back John Hoglin for from Top Step Trader for today's webinar, Finding Success in Futures Trading. At this time, I'd like to take a moment and thank Top Step Trader for loaning us John for the next hour or so. Now, during the webinar, please feel free to type your questions into the questions box, and we'll do our best to answer them at the end of the event. If I see one that is uh, time pertinent, I will try to ask John during the uh, webinar. Also, if you're watching this on YouTube, please do us a favor and give us a thumbs up if you enjoy the webinar. And always, please feel free to share, comment, and subscribe to our channel. It really helps us a lot. Don't forget that you can follow us on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter with at Futures.io. Without further delay, I'll hand it over to John. All right, John, you should get the pop-up to share your screen. And there we are. We got it. Okay, looks good. All right. Thank you, Terry, and uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, very happy to be here today. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about what does success mean in futures trading. Uh, I want to thank everybody for joining us and for trusting me with your time. We try not to waste anybody's time. Uh, and I really kind of wanted to just have a, co a kind of a casual conversation uh, about what success is in futures trading, what it means, and... and uh, you know, feel free to ask questions, and like Terry said, if there's something uh, that he thinks is uh, is important at the time, he's more than welcome to uh, stop me, and we can answer that question at the time. Um, because again, you know, I like to do this kind of more as a, of a conversation than a than kind of a webinar. I thought it would be kind of fun to take a look at this. Um, we're going to be taking a look at largely what most people ask us success is or what success means. We're going to talk about some of the most popular questions as well as uh, answers from many of the people that I have been, uh, you know, trading and trading successfully here at Top Step Trader. We're basically talking just about what we see on a daily basis as to you know, what really equates to any kind of success in futures trading. I uh, got to do the usual Commodity Futures Trading Commission uh, disclaimer. Futures and options trading has large potential rewards, also large potential risk. You must be aware of the risks and willing to accept them in order to invest in the futures and options markets. Don't trade with money you can't afford to lose. This is neither a solicitation to nor an offer to buy or sell futures, stocks, options, or anything on the same. Uh, no representation is being made that any account will or is likely to achieve profit or losses similar to those discussed in this document. Past performance of any trading system or methodology is not necessarily indicative of future results. Well, we're not going to be uh, talking about strategy or anything like that here, so we don't really have to worry about that, but it's always best to put that out there. Uh, an introduction myself, my name is John Hoagland. I have been in the futures industry for 34 years. I've been an active trader. Um, this is a little bit old slide, I think. It's been about 25 years I've been actively trading from the pits and, and then on screen. Um, you get a couple of pictures there in the pit, and uh, that's me now in the middle. Um, and uh, I joined Top Step Trader in 2011, and I, it's been my pleasure to work with and really help the performance of thousands of traders. Um, many of them have earned and maintained funded accounts and something I'm very happy and proud of. Um, the, it's been a long ride, 34 years, hard to believe. Uh, you know, it was 1983 when I first stepped on the floor. I was a runner for a little while. I got a job as a, uh, a deck holder and a pit clerk and I ended up funding my own account. I was a proprietary trader for a number of years as well as a filling broker in the S&P 500 futures pit. Uh, if there's anything that you can do in futures, I've done it. Anything that can happen has to me. Anything good, bad, and ugly, it, I've been through it. So um, I think I have a pretty good idea of, of uh, what it takes to be a futures trader. One of the most difficult times for me was actually leaving the pit and learning to trade on screen. After having a measure of success on the trading floor, the screen was a completely different story. So I had to kind of unlearn what I knew in the pit and relearn what I, what I uh, have been using on screen now for, uh, you know, five or six years uh, and, and doing, doing okay. You know, it's, it's been a tough ride, but I've, I've enjoyed every minute of the challenge 
every step of the way has been a degree of success, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Let's jump in. What is success in futures trading? This is what it seems to be for, for most. Everybody probably has a friend or a parent's friend or somebody who was wildly successful trading futures or stocks or or something. So we all, we all kind of get this idea that the, the true success in futures trading is stacks of cash, maybe it's the yacht, maybe it's the jewels, maybe it's the lake house, maybe it's a big house, maybe it's a car, a, a garage full of cars. Uh, this is really what I think um, that, uh, you know, people just coming into futures trading or don't know much about futures trading think that we all are. We're all just wildly wealthy and, you know, taking taking lots of money and, and all of that. Um, this may even be your picture of what your final success is going to be in futures trading. But there are many, many steps and successes before we can sail around the world on our yacht. Uh, success is, is really kind of a multifaceted thing and is a very personal journey. Uh, to be successful, I kind of went a little fast on that one. Um, to be successful, it's you really have to enjoy what you're dealing with, what you're talking, what you're doing. Uh, it has to be kind of a passion. There is a meritocracy. Okay, um, you can determine your worth once you get to a certain level, and we're going to talk about getting to that level in a few minutes. Meritocracy is you basically eat what you kill. You can kill a lot. You can only kill a little. It's largely up to you, and your makeup is going to be very, very important to how well you do in futures trading, psychological makeup, mental makeup, and knowledge base. Um, I like to make sure that people coming into futures trading, people that I work with on a day-to-day -day basis, people that I talk to in the program, maintain realistic expectations. It takes a, it takes a lot of work, it takes a lot of time to, to build the skills and abilities to be cons consistently profitable. But again, there are successes along the way. And uh, you know these, these successes can come in small steps but each step forward brings you closer to your final goal, which may be that yacht sailing to wherever. So breaking it down to the four most important parts of becoming consistent, profitable, and successful in futures trading, of course, is market knowledge. Okay? The more you understand about how markets work, the better off you're going to be with developing a strategy that you'll be able to count on consistently to profit moving forward. Futures markets are basically auctions, auctions that go higher until it gets too, too expensive, buyers back off, sellers come in, the market rotates lower until nobody's willing to sell it there anymore. That auction is now over and a new auction to the upside will, will ensue. This is the most basic way that I look at the market. I, and I know a lot of other people do as well. Many of the educators on Futures I.O. look at markets as auctions because that is truly what they really are. Self-knowledge. To me, this seems to be one of the most important pieces to the puzzle, if not the most important piece to the puzzle. Knowing your motivations, knowing your decision-making process, Knowing your self-worth, your self-esteem, knowing all of these things about yourself can greatly hinder or help your success as a futures trader. Some people have roadblocks that they've put in front of themselves or others have put in front of them. Knowing yourself is probably, to me, the most important part of, of gaining success in futures. I've worked with several trading psychologists, and I've, I've overcome many barriers to success in trading. I just want to share one with you. I was working with trading psychologists in the early 90s, and I was starting to make money, and I was starting to make some, some pretty consistent money, but I always had that one day that I would blow up. Okay? I know anybody that's traded futures has, has, has had that one day 
where they blow up. So after working with this treating psychologist for a little while, he determined that I didn't believe that I was, that I had earned the money that I had made in the, in the previous, you know, few days or weeks. And that I felt as though somewhere deep down inside, I had to give it back. We worked on that, okay? I was able to overcome that barrier. A lot of it was self-esteem. I had to go to the gym two, two hours a day, five days a week, for, in order for him to continue to work with me. I also had to donate time, okay? I had to collect coats for kids. I had to work at soup kitchens because I didn't feel good enough about myself in order to make that kind of, the kind of money I was able to make. Self-knowledge is very important. Experience, of course. Where we all talk about the idea that 10,000 hours makes you an expert. Well, 10,000 hours might help, but that experience has to be purposeful, and the practice has to be perfect, purposeful. If you're just throwing trades on arbitrarily and patting yourself on the back for the winners and discounting the losses, that's not the real experience or practice that you're looking for. Experience is all part of gaining knowledge, market knowledge as well as self-knowledge. And practice is using all three, the market knowledge, the self-knowledge, and the experience to solidify a process that you can use moving forward consistently. Okay, the uh, beginning to trading success starts at novice, as with anything. The novice may show, may be interested in trading, the novice may be interested in baseball, but they've never played it, they don't know the rules, they don't even know what they don't know. Okay, there's interest, but no real knowledge. Um, most novices that I talk to and that I've heard from in futures trading have those unrealistic expectations. Well, I'm just going to go in there and, you know, I'm going to make $100,000 this year and I'm going to make a million dollars next year. But they have no concept of the risk, the risk of total loss, and the amount of knowledge, both market and self, that they're going to need to accumulate, even to get to the beginner stage. Okay, once you kind of get the idea, okay, you know, I'm interested in this, and now I know enough that I've really got to start to dig into this and start to gain knowledge, both market, self, spend some time doing it, practicing, gaining experience. Then you are moving to the next level, which to me is a degree of success. There's our real first success in futures trading is, number one, getting past the unreasonable expectations of I'm going to be a savant or I'm going to make a million dollars next year to understanding, okay, this is something that I'm passionate about. I really enjoy this and it's a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. So now I really need to start to dig in and expand my knowledge and spend some time doing this. Now, you, now you've become a beginner. Okay, you're, you're understanding the scope of the knowledge needed to be successful at this. Your expectations have been knocked down a little bit, and they're far more reasonable. Um, when you are a beginner, you probably have some idea of strategy. You probably have some idea of technical analysis. You may even have knowledge of fundamental analysis. Whatever tools you're, work, you're using, you're beginning to understand. But you still are going to need to consider every action cognitively. Okay? There is no secondary function. Just like learning to drive a car, when you're a beginner, you have to think, okay, the brake is over here. I have to turn the wheel to go this way. Um, I better check my rear view mirror. You're cognitively thinking these things, but it's not too long until they become secondary functions. And when you start to get to those secondary functions, you, you kind of in increase your learning curve. Okay, you, as a beginner, you're still learning some hard lessons. You're probably making some of the same mistakes over and over again. 
and not understanding why. Most of those mistakes we make that we don't understand why are fear-based. Fear is faster than thought. Understanding this might keep you from making that same mistake the next time and thinking, okay, Hogue says that fear is, is faster than thought, so next time I do this, let me take a second and think. Okay, once you are beyond beginner, you're moving to journeyman, there is another degree of success, another level of success. The journeyman trader, or the journeyman trader can maintain an account at least, okay? You're not losing, maybe you're not making much, but you're not losing. That would be a beginning journeyman. Um, you're, you're really having to think less about certain situations. You're becoming more and more intuitive in your response to the, the information that is being provided by the market. As a journeyman, you should then pretty soon begin to uh, start to um, consistently build an account. Okay, your bad days are probably getting a little less bad. Maybe your good days are getting better and better. We're still going to have, you know, bad trades. We're still going to have losses. We're still going to have days that don't go as well as we'd hoped. But we're maintaining our risk control in those days. The days that th when things are going well, we're learning how to maximize those days. We're learning how to even leverage those days. So once you get to the journeyman stage, you are in, by far, the longest stage from novice to expert. All of this takes time and takes effort. This is a difficult, however, very satisfying endeavor that you're in. You need to be passionate about it. You need to enjoy it. Uh, most traders, once they get to journeymen, remain journeymen. I don't think that there are very many experts out there. The expert basically runs on intuitive action. There's very little thought in what they're doing. Um, I don't know if I've ever really... I, I've never reached expert. I don't plan on ever reaching expert. I'm okay with journeyman and continuing to be a better and better journeyman. Um, your experts, you know, in basketball would be you know, Michael Jordan. He he doesn't he wasn't thinking about all those great shots. He just did them. That was his intuition. He had worked hard enough and long enough to get to the expert level. And I think I may have known one expert trader in my life. He was on the trading floor. People from Top Step Trader have heard me mention um, something that he said to me a long time ago. Um, and maybe this is a good time to, to throw it in. I asked him, I said, you know, how did you make so much money? You know, I was just starting out struggling. He was already a big trader making, you know, making big money. And he said, well, you know, Hogue, that's a that's a flawed question. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, when I started trading, I got it in my head that I was going to be a good trader. I was going to make good trading decisions, and I was going to make those decisions more and more often and more and more intuitively. So that's what I set out to do. The money wasn't even a consideration to me. It was being a good trader because when I became a good trader, the money started coming in. The money was a byproduct of the skills and processes that I'd put in to be a good trader. So um, expert, difficult to get to, but you can be wildly successful without being an expert. There are many, many successful long-time futures traders that are still journeymen, Still making mistakes, of course. Even experts are going to make mistakes. Even experts are going to have losing trades. Nobody's perfect. Perfect perfection is not possible here. But each step through be, being a journeyman is another level of success. 
every level that you improve, every trajectory that you change that, that makes your performance better, everything you learn that you're able to use to, to uh, be more consistent, to be more profitable, to be a better risk manager, these are all levels of success. So we get a lot of questions about, okay, you know, which education and, and tools work or, or don't work? Um, you know, what makes one indicator or tool work for some and, and not, not for others? Um, what is the holy grail of trading education? There's a loaded question. Uh, how do I find quality education? Or what makes me successful in my trading? Well, which education tools work or don't work? It's really up to you. Um, when you take a look at the next slide and there's some suggestions for some education on there. Indicators or tools will work for some but not for others. It's again largely up to you. It's the tools that speak to you. It's the tools you get to know. It's the tools that you're finding useful for finding trades. Is there a holy grail? Never. There is no holy grail in, in trading or in trading education. The only holy grail is you. It's you that are, that are going to create your success. How do I find quality education? This is a difficult question. There is a lot of good quality education out there. There's also a lot of not so good quality education out there. A lot of it is very expensive. Be careful who you pay to teach you how to trade. And what makes me successful in my trading? You do. What is your idea of success? We have up in the upper left-hand side there, there are trading educations where you go and you, and you stand or you sit and you have a screen and there's like an instructor there and he's showing you things on a whiteboard or a blackboard. They're teaching you basic risk management. They're teaching you basic supply and demand ideas. They're, they may even have you trading in a, in a live account in a Forex market using micros. Um, are they good? There's nothing probably bad about them. Are, can they be expensive? Yes, they can. Can you, read, can you learn the same thing from reading a book in the center there? Probably. Most people like to have it presented to them. But most of the information that's already out there is available in books. Um, experience. Experience is a great educator. Time. Time in front of the in front of the screen. Also a great educator. It's going to take some grit, if you will. You're going to have to be tenacious. You're going to have to work pretty hard to gain the information, the market knowledge, as well as the self knowledge to be a successful trader. There's also webinars down at the bottom left there. And how about Futures I.O.? Futures I.O. is a great place to begin to learn futures, even to begin to learn advanced futures. There's great educators all over Futures I.O. It's a great place to talk to other traders from all over the world about the strategies they're using, the tools they're using. They'll even have some pretty good um, suggestions on how to look at these things. There are also many, many tools that people have created to help you with your decision-making processes. A lot of it or none of it will work. It's all in how it relates to you, your belief system, your motivations, your foibles, your strengths, your weaknesses. It's all how you're going to be able to use them. What about indicators? This is just a handful of the ones that are out there. Do all of them work? Do any of them work? Most of them are considered to be lagging indicators, probably all of them. So how do we know which one speaks to us? We have to play. You have to spend time. My suggestion, find one that speaks to you, find one that is introduced to you by an educator, 
buy somebody who you know who is successful. If you have a mentor, maybe they'll have some suggestions for you, but certainly try and keep things simple. K-I-S-S, keep it super simple. Looking at all of this at once, I can't even look at this slide. It confuses me. One of the most important ways to become successful is to remain humble. I like this line underneath there. It says, pride comes before the fall. Stay humble. Staying humble allows you to, to, to accept the fact that you will never be perfect. You will never have only winning trades. You will never know all there is to know about trading. The market is the teacher. So the way to success is knowledge, hard work, sincerity, humility. Stay humble. Every time I have lost my humility, okay, every time I start to get full of myself or confidence or think that I've got it, I don't have to do the work anymore. I've been at this long enough. I get it. I can just do this now. Maybe I've become an expert and I don't have to, I don't, I can just be intuitive and I don't have to do the homework. Um, I get, I'm the one falling off the ladder there. Whenever I start to get confident and full of myself, anytime I start to get pride, I know there's danger at the door. Okay, ego. Ego is one of the biggest hurdles to go over. Nobody likes to be wrong. Nobody likes to be showed they're wrong. It hurts the ego. If you have a strong ego, you're gonna, you may have a difficult time because you're going to get slapped around. You know, if you're jealous, if somebody is telling you how great they're doing, be happy for them. Okay? Online, who knows what they're really doing, for one. But it doesn't do you any good to say, well, you know, I don't like that guy because he's more successful than I am. doesn't help. Cheating. You can't really cheat. Laziness is another one. Every time I say, oh, I'm not going to do my homework tonight, I, you know, I'm not going to do my review in the morning either, so I'm just going to jump in today. I know that there's, that, that there's something wrong, and I've lost my humility, and I'm getting pride or confident or full of myself or whatever it is, and I know I'm going to fall off the ladder. The funny thing about humility is, is once you say you've got it, You've lost it. So I'm not quite sure how to talk about humility in, in, in that way because I try and remain a humble, helpful, happy person. But when I say it, it makes me feel weird that I say I'm, that I'm humble or that I have humility. It's kind of a weird thing. But um, I don't know. I think most of you that know me feel that, that that's true and, and, uh, you know, and, I'm, and I'm good with that. So... Uh, stay humble. He was the the Tao, the Tao that said, "You can't put tea in a cup that's already full. Always give yourself room to grow." Emotions and fears. Emotions and fears are probably the biggest pitfall to to uh, to futures traders. <clears throat> anytime you're at risk, anytime there's a loss, anytime you have a win, there's a change in your emotion and there's a change in your uh, decision-making process. I believe that there is a basic human nature that is contrary to being a good futures trader. And a lot of it relates directly to emotion and fears. When you put your first futures trade on and it goes against you, I think our first impulse is to wait. Well, if I get out here, I'm taking a loss, and I don't want to take a loss, so I'm going to wait. I'm going to hope that the market comes back and makes me whole again. Well, as anybody that's been at this for a little while knows, that's a bad idea because the market is usually going to push you to a point of pain until you have to get out, so you've established a big loss. The, the opposite side of that coin is, and I've talked to many, many uh, coaching clients about this is when the market starts to pay you, you got three ticks, four ticks, five ticks, you're looking at almost $100, you're 
you didn't have before, but your profit target is really 300 and your risk is 150 on the, on the trade. Still, the anxiety causes you to, to get out of that trade before reaching your profit target. It's the anxiety of losing what you already have in the trade, of the market taking a turn and going, coming back and hitting your stop. <clears throat> and it's contrary to good risk reward. Okay, if you're, if you're putting up big losses and cutting your wins, you're doing the opposite of what good professional futures traders do. They cut losses and they let winners run. I think every trade should have a reasonable technical stop or stop loss. And most trades should have a profit target. And that profit target should be reasonably attainable at twice what the risk is on the trade, or even better, three times the risk on the trade. <clears throat> but emotion, fears, our belief system, things that have happened in the past, even the way we think about money can have an effect on that. Adding risk only intensifies those emotions and fears. We have people that come in and they want to trade ones and they get successful trading ones and then they add another one and it changes things. Once they're successful with two, they move to three. I believe that the biggest jump in risk a futures trader should ever take is going from one contract to two. It doubles their risk. And I'm talking in development here. Okay, so emotions and fears are going to control a lot of your decision-making process if you allow them to. An emotional journal, I think, is probably the best way to understand how to respond to emotions instead of having the emotions control you. I don't think emotional control is possible. Um, I think learning how you, you are going to respond to your emotions in certain situations is probably the way to go. Uh, creativity. Uh, creativity is what human beings have that machines don't. Of course, artificial intelligence may catch up with that, but we have the ability to adjust, uh, to adapt, to be creative, to be flexible, and to make decisions intuitively on the fly. Im imagination is more important than knowledge. Being a creative person can keep you on the edge, if you will. Market knowledge, self-knowledge, be a creative person in your self-knowledge. Make, be able to adapt. Market states change, be able to adapt. Many levels of success, we're talking about market understanding here. Okay, market understanding, market state. Probably step number one in your trading plan is deciding or having a hypothesis of what the market state is. Is it rallying? Okay, is it directional or is it consolidation or ranging? There's got to be a strategy for both. There are several sub-states to market state as well. We can't get into that today, but the structure of the market, okay? If you're a technical analyst, you understand structure and you should. Um, understanding the, the way the different time frames play against each other. Longer time frame playing against the shorter time frame. Shorter time frame playing against the medium time frame. This is an auction process. It is never ending, it is omnidirectional, and there is an infinite number of time frames involved in it. Self-understanding, this is all leaning towards consistency and growth. Gotta understand the market state, how to, how to handle the market state, the auction process. In that market state, self-understanding. Self-esteem, self-esteem is a big factor in being a barrier to being able to be a good trader or having a difficult time staying 
humble. Some folks may have a pretty high self-esteem, but that self-esteem is directly related to how much you can pay yourself as a futures trader. Your motivations, why are you a futures trader? Is it all just about the money? Or is this something you're passionate about and something you enjoy? Okay, how about the ability to change? Change is difficult for so many people, whether it's good change or bad change. People will do anything to avoid change, be it good or bad. Uh, your personality or your risk tolerance, are you more of a gambler? You're gonna need to know. And what's your risk tolerance? If you can't handle taking a risk, you're gonna have a hard time taking your foot off of first base. Two trading paradoxes. The more you focus on the money, the harder it is to make it come. Focus on your process. Focus on being the good trader that I mentioned in that story about the best trader I ever saw or I ever met or traded next to. Focus on your process. Focus on putting together a consistent, manageable process for assessing market state, addressing that market state, managing risk, and moving on. Second paradox, becoming a good trader is not an event, it's a lifelong opportunity to continue to grow. Every time I've said, well, I've, I guess I'm good now, I'm a good trader, there's been danger at the door. This is a constant, constant opportunity to continue to work, to grow, to get better. Once you put that guard down, you're going to get punched. I think it was Mike Tyson who said, everybody's got a plan till they get punched in the nose. Okay, I don't think you can ever just sit back and say, okay, I'm a good trader now. I don't have to do the work anymore. I'm, I'm good. So being a good trader, not an event. Uh, can, it's really all about consistency, and it all depends really on you how you're defining market state, having strategies congruent to the market state, and then of course, it's risk management. If you ask me, risk management is king. I'm looking at every trade I take from the risk side first. Finally, what is success? Success is confidence in your survival. That's probably number one. Okay, once you become consistent, profitable, and able to depend on that, you can be confident in your survival in this. Number two, success is the ability to help others. Help others improve, help others to succeed. And I think that's just part of humility. When you get to a certain level, reach back, and help the next one up. The best trader I ever saw was just that kind of guy. He was always willing to help, willing to teach, willing to let other people, if he even knew what he was doing, he would tell you. Okay, so finally, success, confidence in your survival. There are going to be many, many successes along the way before you get to that, okay? Enjoy them, take stock in them, revel in them, and then, and then move on, okay? Is it possible to slip back? Absolutely, absolutely. Dad always said, success is never final. Keep working, keep doing the things that are, that are bringing you your success. You will grow if you continue to do those. Finally, there's a there's a 10 word sentence combined of two letter words that I put out the first webinar I did on Big Mike's um, back in 20 2010, 2012, I don't remember. It was the first one I ever did. And 
when it comes to being successful in anything, whether it's futures trading or selling cars, this is the this is the sentence that that always kind of strikes me as the most important thing many somebody are ever said to me, and this was a uh, headmaster for a high for a high school I went to, and uh, he challenged everybody to come up with the longest word or the longest sentence that you can come up with with two letter words. And, you know, we gave, he gave us about 10 minutes and, you know, nobody really came up with more than three or four sentence, three or four, three or four words in the sentence, but he was trying to teach us a lesson. There, no matter what anybody does for you, does to you, gives you, takes from you, anything like that, when it comes to being successful, if it is to be, it is up to me. Powerful words in just two letter words. So do the work, make it fun, have passion, help others, revel in each success along the way up, and maybe one day we'll meet on the yachts. This link is an, uh, it's an opportunity to look at some different um, educational opportunities and different ways uh, good ways to, to get funded if you want to just write that down um, you know I want to say thanks for and everybody that uh, that attended today I hope that there was uh, something that everybody can bring out of this somebody that something that everybody can take out of this um, and uh, looking forward to seeing more and more success for everybody okay if you have a any questions please type them into the questions box now and I will uh, ask them to John. Let's see. What is driving the market more, technical analysis or fundamental analysis? And can you be profitable only looking at one or the other? Ooh, that's a really good question. Um, the perception of value of a tangible commodity is is always probably more contingent on fundamental information. Um, eventually, the fundamentals are going to are going to um, are are going to to come out. They're going to be the actual perception of value, um, but in a longer time frame. Um, as far as day trading or even swing trading. Um, be aware of when uh, important releases are coming out. You know, um, let's say you're trading crude oil. Yeah, you want to know when the EIA petroleum status report is coming out or API is coming out. Those are fundamental information. That's supply and demand. Okay, and supply and demand is really what drives these auctions. Okay, the market gets too cheap. It gets to demand. People want to buy it down there. Okay, the market gets too expensive, it gets to supply. People aren't interested in paying retail, they want to buy wholesale. They want to sell retail. So fundamentals are of course very important, but in my in in, in my experience, in most trading days, relatively you know, relatively irrelevant, if you will. It's more technical information or market profile that I'm bar that I'm basing my trades off of. Uh, because I'm not in the market that long. If I were a you know a, a bigger trader, a long-term trader, I would probably be more interested in the fundamentals of supply and demand. But as for a day trader, uh, you know, I, I I find them actually tricky. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Uh, how can you distinguish the good intention of a mentor versus the bad intention of a salesman only trying to sell you a service? Oh, man. Um, a, a salesman is, is, is after the sale. A salesman is putting pressure on you. 
a mentor. Um, a real mentor, it's not going to change his life whatsoever, whether or not you choose to use them or, you know, use their services or whatever it is. Okay, a mentor is interested in you. A salesman is interested in the paycheck. Um, that's at least been um, my experience. Uh, and it's a really great question because there are a lot of, um, I, you know, I don't really want to, there's a lot of people that, that I would really question as to, you know, what their real intentions are in, uh, in any industry and, in, in, you know, futures is no different. Um, but when there's pressure, uh, that's a red flag to me. Um, you know, uh, it's, it's, you know, I think a real mentor is not going to, yeah, you, they want to help you, but it's not going to make a difference in their life. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, what is your favorite trading book? Favorite trading book? Um, it, it has to be um, Mind Over Markets by Jim Dalton. Um, Classic. It was, you know, it came out in 1990. I was a self-funded trader in the S&P pit, really struggling. Um, a friend of mine that, uh, you know, was considerably more successful grabbed me outside the pit one day and, and he pulled something out of his jacket and stuffed it in mine and he looked at me and he said, read the first hundred pages tonight, bring it back to me tomorrow and go get your own. <laughs> and so I did. I read the first hundred pages and... I credit that book at that time, and, and, and I thank Arch Mesta at this time for giving that to me and, and making me read that book, because I honestly think if, I, if it didn't happen at that time and I never read that book, I would be doing something completely different with my life right now. And I've enjoyed being a futures trader. All the good, all the bad, all of it overall has been a great, great time and a great life. Awesome. Um, if you had 30 seconds to go back in time and give your young self one tip, what would it be? Ooh, wow. I feel like this is a, a job interview, but uh, one tip? Um, yeah. Um, when computers first came out, yes, I'm that old, I was very resistant to the idea that they were going to eventually take over the world. So I would probably tell myself to buy Microsoft and Apple um, <laughs> as soon as they came out, and lots of it. It, um, it reminds me, uh, I worked in manufacturing, uh, and there was a saying back in the day about trying to stay as close to the profit, to the uh, product as possible, especially once robots took over. And I everyone that I talked to said that you want to be you want to work on the machine. You you want to if you can't you know be in manufacturing where you want to be as close to the machine as possible. I think computers are the same way if, if back in the day if you could uh, understand computers quickly or quicker, you know. Mm -hmm. And I think today, going forward, you know, our time is, you know, machine learning, AI, these kind of concepts that are coming about. I think the quicker you can get to understanding those, the better off you're going to be. Well, yeah, the world just keeps moving faster and faster. And, uh, you know, if you're, if you're not in front of it, you're behind it. Exactly. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to get through the questions. Well, I'm honored there are so many. <laughs> so 
all one I'm trying to find. I wanted to ask. Uh, okay, I've seen many teachers, mentors advising that doing a lot of trades is beneficial. Yet I've seen others warn about overtrading. If I'm recording the results of my trade ideas, it seems that it's okay to monitor until I feel confident the ideas. What are your thoughts on this? Well, I think it depends on your trading time frame. There's, it, it's going to be somewhat directly related to your personality. Um, I, some people like to be involved. They, they like to be intense. They want to be in. They want to be out. And I think that they're they're that they're up against some pretty tough competitors in the fact that most of the scalping is now done by machines. Um, so I don't really recommend being a very short time frame scalping type trader. If it works for some people, that's fine. That's great. Way too intense for me. Um, you know, for, for teaching, um, if they're not teaching a specific strategy, I think they should be teaching, you know, more about helping these traders figure out who they are, what kind of time frame they would be most comfortable in, and then, and then suggesting um, trading in that time frame. You know, if you are um, kind of, a, I call them daytime swing traders, somebody who's going to be looking for good trade opportunities in a longer time frame, but holding them for the day time frame. Okay, so maybe one, two, three trades a day. Um, that's kind of the way I look at things. I'm looking for bigger bites out of the market. Um, you know, somebody's going to be a, more of a swing trader. Uh, you have to try and help them understand how they're going to improve doing that with fewer, with less data. In other words, I understand what this teacher's saying is, if you're going to learn how to trade, the more data, the better. However, more data the better it might only work for a certain percentage of his students because some of the students might not want to be that intense they may want to take a little bit more time in thinking about the opportunities before getting into it or you know not necessarily thinking about the opportunities but being in the opportunities longer taking bigger bites out of the market um, so you know whoever this teacher is and, and I'm hoping that they're that they're good I'm sure they are um, but I you, know, you have to consider who the student is and you know what their energy level is and you know what kind of trader they they, they kind of could grow into be and I, and I realize that you know traders change over time markets change over time we have to, we all have to adapt we got to be creative to be able to do that um, and again, you know, I get the more data is better idea, but if you're dealing with somebody who may be, you know, thinking, well, you know, I don't want to sit at this thing all day long and, you know, I get the, get the mouse all sweaty and be in and out and, you know, rack up a whole bunch of, of commissions and fees, I want to take a look at, you know, bigger opportunities and, and pick my spots and, know where my risk is and come up with reasonable profit targets that are two, two three, four times my risk on this trade and see my, my trades get to that. Awesome. Thank you. Um, what is the biggest mistake that one can make in their trading career? Um, striving for perfection. Okay, I have a sense of humor, man. Uh, Trying to be perfect is not possible. Um, you know, I've heard educators on Futures I.O. over and over again talk about the fact that when you take a look at 2,000 trades over time, you're going to be right about half the time. It's almost like a coin flip. So if you are somebody who needs to be right all the time or is striving for perfection, you're going to go insane. Um, you know, and this is a, a, a sweeping generalization, but many of the mathematicians and engineers that I've worked with here, the, the futures drives them crazy because there's no right answer. Sometimes one plus one is three here, and it's very difficult to strive for perfection. And I think that need for perfection is a big barrier for a lot of folks. And they get very serious about it, okay? I had a losing trade, you know, what am I going to do? Well, you paid for a little information, you know, take your lump and move on.
manage your risk. It's part of the game. Can't be a boxer and not expect to take a punch. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, I've taken a few myself, so you got to be able to take it and say, okay, well, there's another lesson that I paid for. What now? Absolutely. Um, what was the moment that trading clicked for you, Aaron? Do you, do you consider that it clicked? Do you consider that mm. you, you've made it? Mm, no. Uh a pivotal time, a pivotal moment in, in trading was when my friend handed me that book. Was it a click? No. Have, have there been many clicks? Every time I say that, okay, I get it. I, something clicked in me today. I can do this forever now. It's been trouble. Okay, I find that, that you know, anytime I kind of think, okay, you know, I've got this wrapped up now. I can just, you know, put on a trade and it's just going to go my way. Or I start to think, you know, the market would never do that to me. Or um, there have been many, many clicks, but I try not to call them that. I call them, you know, successes that I can slip back past because, you know, this is difficult. It is ambiguous. It is... Um, sometimes exasperating, sometimes exhilarating. Uh, but every time I've said, I, okay, there was a click yesterday and now I don't have to do the work anymore. I know that, that, that I've got, I've got risk coming at me. Great. That's awesome. Um, let's see. I feel like I'm missing a question that I wanted to ask. Terry, are you, are you sewing? No, it's my fan. It's, I'm here in Texas. <laughs> uh, making a nice sweater. Uh, there you go. <laughs> okay. If you were not a trader, what would be your profession? And I'll leave this as the last question. Um, I would be a professional rock star. I can see it. And I would already be old. <laughs> <laughs> no, I am. What would I be? Well, <clears throat> I went to art school. And, uh, but I was kind of a, a legacy in the industry. My dad was on the, on the trading floor for 40 years. So, um, at some point, I decided that you know, uh, fine arts and start starving for my artists for my art wasn't going to work for me. So um, that's when I went and went in, and got the job at the Merck and and been there ever since. And I got to tell you, as a creative person, this has been an opportunity to be creative. Um, you know, basically be an artist. Um, and uh you know adapt and change and you know i have other outlets for my creativity i'm a musician and, and i'm an artist and and you know I, I write some songs here and there and and uh and uh, i'm a father so <laughs> that's certainly a creative endeavor <laughs> awesome well thank you for the uh, webinar the info today and uh, most importantly your time it was a pleasure. It was nice to talk to you, Terry. Nice to talk to everybody. Again, hopefully somebody and everybody, uh, you know, brought something that they can use moving forward and looking forward to hearing of your successes. Absolutely. You take it easy. Take care.